Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name is Eric with Two Guys in a Cooler and I'm glad you could join us because today we're going to be continuing our test on the prototype dry curing chamber that we got from First Build. Now, if you missed the last episode, you can check it out right here. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little spoiler alert that uh, we were not very pleased with the performance of that prototype unit uh, doing a dry run, so we had no meat in it. I didn't like the way the temperature was kept, and I didn't like the way that the humidity was kept. The temperature ran low, and the humidity ran high. Today, we are going to be loading that chamber up with meat, and I set a poll out for you guys to see how you wanted me to proceed with this particular chamber, and 55% of you said you guys wanted me to max it out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to see what the cavern can do at full capacity, and I got to tell you, before we've put any meat in there, I've got some concerns. My biggest concern is that there's no dehumidification system inside the dry curing chamber. There's only a humidification system. It operates on four wicking filters and really relies on the compressor motor of the refrigerator to drop the humidity. Once the humidity gets low enough, the fans kick on for that system and it allows the humidity to increase. Now, it's only a concern at this point. Uh, by the end of this video, though, I guarantee you will know whether or not it's a problem. The other uh, concern that I have are the fans themselves. Are they going to blow too much air around inside the chamber to cause dry ring or uh, uneven drying, maybe even case hardening? So a couple things that I'm thinking about before we start this project. Let's go ahead and get into it and get our meat prepared. Okay, in order to get started, my meat needs to cure. So we're going to weigh each one of those muscles individually and record the weight. This particular muscle is the picanha, and I'm very excited because we have yet to dry cure a picanha. So I can't wait to see how that turns out. And in a minute, we'll go over the different cuts that we chose and why we specifically chose those cuts of meat. This particular one right here is a filet, and this is a copa. And this is what everything looks like now that we're done. So at this point, what we need to do is formulate our recipes based off of our weights. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to go ahead and write out the recipes and then begin to season each one of them individually. Each piece of meat that we're doing for this test is going to have its own flavor profile. So we're doing an Italian brassaola. We've got a fennel orange duck, a Calabrian tenderloin, Spanish lomo. So we've got a lot of really cool, unique pieces of charcuterie that we're going to add to Cavern to uh, really put this dry curing chamber to the test. And this is what my chicken scratch looks like after we're done. So each project's laid out. I've got the recipes and the quantity of each spice. And if you guys want to see the actual recipes for each one of these, give this video a thumbs up and uh, make a comment and I'll be sure to post it on my website. All right, everything's seasoned, and now we need to vacuum seal it. And just to let you know, the meat that we chose to use for this project, with the exception of copa, is very lean. And we did that because very lean meat in a dry curing chamber is quite unforgiving. And so I didn't want to give Cavern any help by adding lots of fatty cuts. So here's what we got. It's all vacuum sealed. Uh, this particular muscle, this is the beef filet. I'm real excited about that one. This is going to be the pasturma. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a weight on that in the refrigerator while it's uh, curing, and that's going to give us a flatter appearance. So this is going to go into my home fridge for about two weeks, which is how long it's going to take me to receive cavern. And what's neat is that I use the equilibrium cure for all of these. So those smaller cuts like the tenderloin and the bresaola can stay in as long as the copa. And because we did the equilibrium cure, they're all going to be fine, and none of them are going to come out saltier than they need to be. So let me show you how we're going to prepare the meat for cavern. We're just going to remove it from the vacuum seal bag, and with a paper towel, I'm just going to blot it dry. Now, you can completely rinse it off, and that would be fine, but when this dries, those spices that coat the outside form a really nice crust, and it just adds to the experience. Although if you do use dried bay leaf, I would remove the bay leaf uh, before you know putting it in the chamber. This is our filet. Look at that nice flat appearance that's been pressed for two weeks. And here we go. This is uh, what we're working with. All of this is going to be wrapped in a collagen sheet. Now we're going to be using the kit that comes from the sausage maker. These are basically collagen sheets with uh, netting and a little bit of string. And then as a bonus, I'm going to cold smoke these right here 
And these over here, I'm just gonna put into the chamber without cold smoking. All right, so let's go ahead and get this going. We're gonna lay one collagen sheet on a dry cutting board, and in the very corner, I'm just gonna place a piece of meat. Now this is the pork tenderloin, Calabrian style. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that piece of collagen sheet to fit that piece of meat. Once I get it cut, we're gonna wrap it around the meat, squeezing out any air pockets. And if I don't get all the air pockets out, that's okay. I'm gonna poke it with a sausage poker here in just a minute. But now that we have that completely wrapped, this is what that's gonna look like. So let's go ahead and do the rest of them, wrap them in a netting, and then get them into the chamber. All right, here we go. Time to get this into the chamber. We've pricked out the air pockets. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Spanish loin, the tenderloin, and the Bressa Ola. And we're gonna place that into cavern. And I gotta be completely honest, after the first test, I wasn't very encouraged with the way that this unit uh, held the temperature that I set and the uh, humidity. You know, the humidity was a little high and the temperature was actually a little low. So we're gonna see how this unit does with meat in it. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get our cold smoker up and running. We're gonna take the rest of our projects. Now the rest of our projects include pasturma, copa, we're gonna use picanha, duck, and I believe that's it. And we're gonna get our cold smoker up and running. So I'm using a little pecan wood, a little uh, apple wood for this, and we're gonna cold smoke this for somewhere between four hours, four and a half hours, something like that, just to give it a nice kiss of smoke. And this is what that's gonna look like. So it smells absolutely amazing. This is gonna add a really nice uh, flavor to that cured meat. Of course, if it comes out okay. And we're gonna place that into a cavern. And uh, now 55% of you said you guys wanted this chamber maxed out. And as I'm filling this up, it looks like I've got Looks like I've got a little bit of room here at the top. So uh, what do you think? Let's make some salami right quick. Final step of the salami making process. After fermentation, we're going to test the pH with our Apera Instruments pH meter. And we're looking for 4.9 to 5.2. It looks like we were at 4.9, 4.89. I'm totally okay with that. And let's see how much of that salami we can put in here. So at this point, we've got about 20 pounds of cured meat inside cavern. And you can see those long salami sticks, plenty of room for those nice big fat chubs. This cavern is maxed out, so let's go ahead and close it off, let it run for some hours, and then take a look at our thermo hygrometer to see what the readings are. And so this is what we're looking at. Let me expand the screen right quick. We can take a peek at it. So our temperature's reading 52.2, a little lower than I'd like, and our average humidity, uh, no surprise here, has spiked to about 90%. Uh, that's not gonna work. So let me open up the chamber. It's now the following day and see if we can uh, make some adjustments to get that humidity down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove a pair of these filters. Now, at this point, the humidification system for Cavern is basically turned off. So all we have is a basin of water with humidification uh, wicking filters. And our temperature is at 60 Fahrenheit. And so let's go ahead and close this back off, let it run for some more hours and see what it looks like. All right, we're back to the uh, Govi device, and you can see right there where I removed the filters. That's, let me kind of expand that section. All right, so funny enough, with the filters removed, it looks like the temperature dropped to 49.9, and the humidity dropped a couple points to 88%, which is still not good enough. You know, maybe for the first week, but if it maintains that high humidity for too long, then you start to get unwanted you know, mold growth, all kinds of really bad problems can happen with your meat. So let's remove the second pair of wicking filters 
and see if that makes a difference. So at this point, the only thing we have is a basin of water. So the fans aren't running for that humidification system right now. So let's put that back together and see what it looks like. All right, so the very end of that chart, all the way to the right, now that's the segment where we removed the second set of wicking filters, and I'll expand that here in a second. But as the meat is in there evaporating its you know, moisture, that humidity is continuing to rise. And so we are at 52.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little lower than I like. Now this is with no wicking filters and the unit off. There's basically just a basin of water in there. Uh, and then the humidity is averaging at about 89.7%, which is completely unacceptable. All right, so um, with no system in place to help bring down that humidity, it's just going to stay at that 88, 89% mark. So one last thing I do want to try. Now, I am loving the mold growth. That high humidity is really working wonders for that mold growth. Uh, one thing I'm going to try is remove all the salami. That salami weighs about 10 pounds. And so that's going to take out about half of the meat in the chamber. And I want to see whether or not that makes a huge difference. But at this point, I can tell you with 100% certainty that uh, this test is a bust. So let's just kind of take a look at it. This is only the muscles that we're dry curing. There's 10 pounds in there. And let's just see what that looks like after a day or so and take a peek. All right. So um, 52.3 degrees Fahrenheit, so still lower than I'd like. You can see the spike. That's when I opened up the chamber and was messing around in it. And the average humidity is about 85%. And so the humidity did drop. 85 is okay for the first week, but as that moisture evaporates from the meat, it's going to continue to keep that humidity uh, a lot higher than we want. So we're just going to transfer this into our other chamber and let it finish dry curing in there because Cavern's got a couple issues. Let's talk about them. All right, folks, there you go. I guess the concern has officially become a problem. And without a dehumidification system in place, it's really impossible to effectively balance out the humidity in the chamber. The moment the meat went in, humidity spiked to 90%, and the design currently is sort of relying on the compressor motor of the refrigerator to bring down that chamber or for the meat to eventually stop evaporating moisture, which neither one of those methods are gonna produce high quality charcuterie. All right, so if I get to put my two cents in on how we move forward with First Build's dry curing chamber prototype, Cavern, I say the only topic that needs to be on the table right now is dehumidification. I think that the temperature and the humidity controls should be separate. I don't think they should be connected. I think that each one should operate independently. So, you know, the temperature only operates the temperature and the humidity, whether it's increasing or decreasing the humidity, that's an independent system. And I think once we can figure that out, we can then move on to, you know, higher quality controls, higher quality sensors so that we get more accurate readings. And although this test was a complete disaster, I think we got some really great data out of it. I'm shooting all that information over to First Build. And remember, this is the purpose of doing prototype testing. I mean, the very beginning is not gonna be pretty. We're gonna have a lot of problems and hiccups along the way. And hopefully as we get closer to a market ready product, these problems and issues are gonna be resolved, polished, and uh, we're gonna end up with an absolutely beautiful product. So don't think the testing is over just because I can't put meat in it because I am already working up a plan B as I am dying to know whether my concern of those fans is actually going to be a problem or not. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button right now and that notification bell so you can be notified of future videos as uh, I think you're really going to love the next installment in this prototype testing. If you like this video, give it a great big thumbs up. I'm glad you can make it. See you next week. Bye-bye.